This is a Titan X, and this is also a Titan X. They look and sound very similar. Fortunately, we can tell the difference since our original Titan X came without the middle T. I kid, of course, but we're not sure NVIDIA is kidding or not with this naming scheme. Seriously, guys? Okay, so to clarify, this is the original GeForce GTX Titan X based on Maxwell, and this is the new NVIDIA Titan X based on Pascal. The new NVIDIA Titan X is not branded as GeForce GTX, but according to NVIDIA's website, it's still part of the GeForce family, so that's why you'll see some of the GeForce branding on it. Anyways, you get the gist. Let's get on with the video. The new Titan X takes the recently launched GTX 1080's place as the most powerful single graphics card for gaming. The 1080 is based on the GP104 GPU, while the Pascal Titan X is based on the GP102 GPU. However, it's important to note that shortly after Nvidia announced this Titan X, they also revealed the more powerful Quadro P6000, which is also based off GP102, but with 3840 CUDA cores compared to the Titan X's 3584. Now, obviously the P6000 is a quadro card, so it's not meant for gaming, but the Pascal Titan X is based off a cut down version of GP102, so we could see a GTX 1080 Ti arrive eventually with a full fat GP102, or even a GP100, if the green gods choose to bless us with it. Here's the full list of the specs, but the highlights are those 3584 CUDA cores we mentioned, 12 gigs of GDDR5X memory, and a boost clock of 1.53 gigahertz. Now let's take a quick look at the Titan X. It's got a black exterior just like the previous GeForce Titan X, however the new card has the angular shapes on the shroud that can also be found on the GTX 1080. So you could say it borrows a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. In terms of the fan size on the blower cooler, it's roughly 2.5 inches, which is the same as the GTX Titan X. For the ports, we have three display ports, one HDMI, and one DVI port. In terms of power connectors, it has one 6-pin and one 8-pin. The Titan X also has SLI fingers and is SLI ready. But is the Pascal Titan X even meant for gaming? Eh, sort of. Like all graphics cards in Nvidia's Titan line, it skirts the line between gaming and professional use. But NVIDIA is marketing this GPU more towards industry professionals than ever before. Whereas before, the Titan cards were aimed towards gamers who also did professional work, the Pascal Titan X is being marketed towards professional users who also game and have the money to blow. Much like what AMD did with the Radeon Pro Duo, and evidenced by the fact that they removed the GeForce branding. Okay, so professional use, what does that mean anyway? Well, the original GTX Titan performed very well in double precision compute, or FP64, applications. But with subsequent Titans, Nvidia moved away from making a killer FP64 card and focused more on killer gaming cards with great single precision compute, or FP32 performance. The Pascal Titan X does indeed shine in that area with 11 teraflops of power, but Nvidia is also touting the card's performance in INT8 operations, which are useful for deep learning. Now, we aren't doing a whole lot of machine learning here at NTX Tech Tips, but we do have a bench system set up for games and synthetic graphics benchmarks, so let's talk about those. We use the same Skylight test bench that we used for our recent graphics card reviews with an i7-6700K, so look at these numbers as a relative indicator of performance compared to other cards, not as a maximum performance type of scenario. Across the board, as expected, the Pascal Titan X beat the 1080 by anywhere from 20 to 50%. The lead seemed to increase in synthetic benchmarks like Unigen Heaven and Valley, 3D Mark Extreme and Ultra, and the new DirectX 12 Times Spy benchmark. Okay, so the Titan X, unsurprisingly, sits a rung above the GTX 1080 on the gaming graphics card ladder and takes its place as the current performance king. So, how do you get your hands on this thing? Well, it's a little more complicated than other graphics card launches. Nvidia is only selling this card standalone through Nvidia.com for $1200 US. Otherwise, you can only get them through a handful of professional system builders like NSAX PC, who are the only Canadian system builder to have access to the Titan X. 
Speaking of our very own NCIX PC, which is winning the Intel Extreme Wig Challenge, by the way, they are building custom PCs with the NVIDIA Titan X as the flagship product, together with other top-of-the-line parts like the Intel i7-6900K and the ASUS X99-A2, Vengeance LPX 16GB memory, a Samsung 950 Pro 250GB M.2 SSD, and a custom painted case. You can check out more info about this PC build right over here. So as with all Titan releases, this one isn't necessarily for everybody, but if you have the money and you're looking for the king of gaming GPUs or you're an industry professional who wants the best of both worlds, then the Titan X is what you're looking for. And that about wraps it up for this video on Nvidia's new Titan X. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos. Hit us up on Twitter right over here. But as always, don't forget to like the video, comment down below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.